Welcome to our Sunday live stream. We've got a fantastic experience lined up for you today. First up, we have an awesome Sunday school lesson taught by one of our dynamic teachers. After that, we get ready for our morning worship service, packed with singing, scripture reading, prayer, and an inspiring sermon from one of our ministers. So sit back, relax, and join us for worshiping God. Let's have a great time together. Should be 395 in the one you got, Debbie. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning, Sunday school members. Oh, it is always good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You've blessed us through this week, dear Lord, and we want to thank you this morning and praise you. We welcome those of you that are here in, in, in body and in soul, and we welcome those that are um, on the air by whatever technology you may be using. This morning, we're going to stand and sing a verse of Stand Up for Jesus, after which we'll have the scripture readings and then the prayer by Deacon Gamble. If you all stand, please. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Again, good morning and welcome. Our scripture reading for this quarter will be coming from Psalms 62 verses 1 through 8. Psalms 62, verses 1 through 8. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. How long will ye imagine, imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall be, yes shall ye be, and as a tuttering fence. My soul wait upon only upon God, for my expectation is from him. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Let us all together trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before God. Him, excuse me, God is a refuge for us. Let's do our recitation in concert this morning, which is coming from the 62nd Psalms, verses 9 through 12. Surely men of low degree of vanity, in men of high degree are a lie, to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou rendest to every man according to his work. We will now be led in prayer by, prayer by Deacon Gamble. Pray. Amen. Eternal Lord, our Father. Yes. We come at this moment. Oh mm -hmm. Lord, say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We come, O oh God, because you have been good to us. Mm -hmm. You look beyond our faults. Mm -hmm. You saw our misery. Yes. You washed over us all. Mm -hmm. And then early this morning, O oh God, you touched us with your finger of love. Yes. Woke us from our slumber mm -hmm. and our sleep. Mm -hmm. Letting us know, O oh God, that you are not finished with us yet. Yes, Lord. That we are yet in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. And out of that, O oh God, we should thank you. Thank you. For you did not allow us to sleep on in 
into eternity. Mm -hmm. Lord, you yet have works for us to do. Mm -hmm. And we come this morning, oh God, to lift up your holy and mighty name. Yes. Because there is no name that is above your name. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we are so thankful this morning that you have blessed us, oh God, to be able to come out and feel the freshness of the air, to see the bright sunshine, mm -hmm. hear the bird twinkling and the wind breeze through, oh God, to feel the mighty presence of your Holy Ghost power, oh God. We yes, thank Lord. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, mm. we know that we didn't deserve this. Mm -hmm. But your son Jesus, mm -hmm. oh God, you allow us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you. You allow us to see another Sabbath. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know how many, but God, we thank you for this one. Yes. Because there were many that started out in January. Mm -hmm. But you have called them from labor to reward. But you allow our golden moment to roll on just a little while longer. And God, we are not vocal, but we have said thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. God is and direct us. Yes. Lord, don't let our latter days be worse. Let them be the latter to be better than those behind. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you bless every church this morning that mm -hmm. is planted by your hand. Yes. Every preacher who will be proclaiming your gospel this morning. Mm -hmm. Every teacher who God who will be teaching your word. Let your Holy Ghost power bow down upon them afresh, oh God, that they might teach your word with, with power and authority, mm -hmm. that it might be taught with clarity and with understanding, mm -hmm. that they, the students and the listeners, oh God, that they will leave this place, oh God, mm -hmm. even better than they did when they came. Yes, Lord. And then, oh God, when we come down from this place of worship mm -hmm. and go back into the highways and the byways, oh God, mm -hmm. of our normal ways of life, yes. that somebody might say, these are they. Mm -hmm. who have been in the presence of the Lord. Oh God, not by what we say, but by the way we live, oh God, that we can see the that they can see the Jesus in us. Mm -hmm. That they will have a desire, oh God, to seek after you. Yes. Lord, this is your servant prayer, we pray. We ask it all now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And the people say amen. 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 Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him that overcometh a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Amen and amen. We'll turn the adult class over to Deacon Gamble, and we will take the young folks to the back.
Good morning to each and every one. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you to our Sunday school here at Ebenezer by whatever means of technology that you are joining and sharing in with us. We hope and pray to God that something will be said through this teaching of this lesson that would inspire you and uplift your spirit. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again before you. We ask now, God, for a fresh and non of your Holy Spirit. That is, as we prepare for teaching your word, O oh God, we can't do nothing without you, but through you, we can do all things that strengthen us. So strengthen us now, O oh God, with the power of your Holy Spirit, that your word may be taught, that it might reach the ears of the hearers and the hearts of these that believe. And then, O oh God, that it will be taught with clarity and with understanding, and that your people might receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson for today which is this first Sunday of April, 2024. And this is lesson number one for the week of April the 7th, 2024. The lesson subject is healing a friend in need. Healing a friend in need. The background passage of this lesson comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. The lesson passage for study is the same, Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. The unifying topic says, faith of four friends. Faith of four friends. The lesson text is divided into three parts. The first part is friend determination, Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. The second part, Jesus discerned the paralytic, faith. Luke chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. And the third part is Jesus' work is despised and discussed. Luke chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. The main thought. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with the palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up, they went upon the house top and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Luke chapter 5, verses 18 and 19 of the King James Version. The unifying principle. People need a support system when trying to overcome life obstacles. How can our friendship lend strength and support to others who are in crisis? Jesus celebrate the faith and tendency of our four friends who help a friend finding healing and wholeness. Lesson eight. The men were determined to get their friend to Jesus. And when Jesus saw the faith of the paralytic, Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven. Life ain't. We should do our best to share the riches of God's love with those who are less fortunate. If by chance others do not understand the depth of our ministry, we should not allow them to diminish our efforts. God's word in life. Proverbs 18 and 24 remind us that a friend will stick closer than a brother. Walter Winch Hill said, a real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. And drop down to the third, second paragraph, the third paragraph. In our lesson today, we find four men who were determined to get their friend to Jesus. They refused to let the density, density of the crowd or the difficulty of climbing through the rooftop impeded them from getting their friend to Jesus. It was not only their love for their friend that is highlighted, but also the trust and faith of the paralytic that believed that if he could get to Jesus, he could once again walk. Are you that kind of friend? 
Do you have friends like this? A friend in need is a friend indeed. Introduction. <clears throat> this is the first full lesson of, from the unit, from our unit. The measure of faith. And the first of three, three from the Gospel of Luke. Luke's reason for writing his gospel is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. As he states that he is writing to a dear Gentile friend, friend named Theopolis because he wanted him to have an orderly account of the life and ministry of Jesus. It seemed good to me also have a perfect understanding of all things Things from the very first to write unto things wherein thou hast been instructed. Luke chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 from the King James Version. Let me jump down to the next paragraph. According to Luke chapter 5, Jesus has called his first disciple, Peter, Simon Peter, as he is preaching and teaching in the area around the Sea of Galilee. It was during this time that the Lord Jesus instruct Peter to go out deeper and let down his net to catch some fish. Peter's response was, We have worked hard all night fishing and caught nothing. But at your word, Lord, I will do as you said. When Peter obeyed the Lord, he caught an abundance of fish. This caused Peter to bow down to Jesus. Jesus remarked to Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for men, for people. Luke chapter 5 and verse 10. This was another instance where Jesus' power and wisdom was demonstrated. Jesus continued healing throughout the area. On another instant, Jesus reaches out and touches a man with an advanced case of leprosy, which we'll find back up in verse 13. The man believed and was healed immediately. Luke chapter 5, verse 15 and 16 speaks of Jesus withdrawing in the wilderness for prayer. Sometime shortly after this, Jesus is teaching in the presence of some Pharisees and teachers of the law, who may have been from the areas of every village of Galilee and Judea, both the north and the south. While Jesus is in a house teaching, some friends bring a paralytic to Jesus to heal, to be healed. Mark says that it was four friends. This lesson reminds us how desperate we need one another. And that everyone needs Jesus. But it is not just knowing of Jesus. It is having a faith and trust in Jesus to heal us and make us whole. And by making us whole, it's talking about mind, body, and spirit. So here we come to this part of the text and the first portion of the letters, lesson that is assigned to us for the day. From Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And it talks about a friend's determination. And these are the words are recorded from the King James Virgin. Now, I'm sorry, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Okay? Then, and behold, men brought a babe, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. Now to lay him is the man, and before him is Jesus. 
Okay, these two him. That's what they're talking about, the man and Jesus. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in the man, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, that's what Jesus said unto the man, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. In this part of the lesson here talks about a friend determination. We see here that these four friends who were determined to bring their friend to Jesus. And it is that their friend had believed also that if he get to Jesus, that Jesus would heal him and he would be able to walk again. So it shows here the friend's determination that they were determined how can we get our friend to Jesus. They are believing as well as their friend. So they put him and pick him up upon his couch or his bed, whichever term we want to put on it that he was laying upon. And they brought him to the house where Jesus was. Because they say that, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, by which were come out of every town in Galilee and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord, listen, the power of the Lord was present to heal. They believed that we get there. Now, this was not on the Sabbath day, because they had already questioned Jesus' authority about doing work on the Sabbath. So, and, the, and the scripture points out here that on a, on a certain day, it doesn't say what day of the week it was, but we, we know it was on the Sabbath. And they gathered there to see what would happen because Jesus, whenever he was present, there was always the presence of the Pharisees and those that despised him and always tried to <clears throat> speak and hinder him and was against his teaching. But this, these men, these men, these friends, they brought their friend to Jesus and he was paralyzed. And they sought means when they got Jesus to them. After they got to the house where Jesus was, they said that the crowd was so best, and that is nowhere that they was going to move or back up and let these fall through with their friend carrying him on a couch or bed. Because all that were there, they were there to hear the teaching of Jesus. And then there were the other groups who were there who was to just observe and see what he would do. So after looking around and they got there and they saw the multitude of the crowd, they said, I can imagine they say to themselves, well, there's no way we can work our way through this crowd and they're not going to let us through. So what did they do? They say that uh, when they could not find what where they might bring him <clears throat> in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop. Now, uh, we is in here. I mean, somebody go up there. <coughs> Excuse me. If somebody go up there on that roof <laughs> and start banging to cut a hole in. No doubt we were hearing the noise. But I'm just imagining and praying and thinking through this by studying it. That with this happening, because... During that time of Palestine, the houses, they had, their roof was flat. As though the day we built decks or patios that we set out 
and relax and do cookouts or whatever. But they would use that in the Palestinian time for for their relaxation. And the roof was made out of mud and straw, a little hard, and they pack and clay, and they keep packing. And no doubt that Jesus there teaching, and the crowd is there, and these men up there, I know modern day time, a raft is supposed to be 16 inches apart. Now, how did these men know exactly where to cut in the roof? A space large enough to let their friend down. And not only that, as they're doing this, there had to be some disturbment from the roof falling down upon the people that was in the house. But I can imagine that they were so involved and they were so focused on the teaching of Jesus. And this is what happened when we shut the world out and turn our divine focus to Jesus. We don't hear what is going on around us and not even see we be put on our divine focus and we become spiritual focus. Hear these men, hear these men. And they are doing this. And no doubt, I can imagine that if they could hear where Jesus was, that they can get a hole large enough and then they can look down through and then they know where Jesus was. Now they know whether they have to go this way, that way, this way, or that way. That they could cut the opening in the space that they need to get Jesus in, to get their friend in before Jesus. And, 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 20 say, and when he saw, so now after this happened, and they opened up the roof on the house and everything, and what happened, they, 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 they let the man down. And, they, and when they let him down, in verse 19 say, they let his couch into the mist right before Jesus. So now when Jesus uh, uh, saw this, he said unto him, this is Jesus speaking to the man who was on the couch, man, thy sin are forgiven thee. Now that really stirred up them Pharisees and them doctors, strives of the law. So now they have a problem with, with Jesus, with Jesus saying this. So now, it's a question before we move to the second part. So now when we, if not, we move to the second part. Now when we move to the second part, listen what happened now. It said Jesus discerned the paralytic faith. Jesus saw the faith of this man. And what does Jesus do and say? And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemously? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Otherwise, they question Jesus. You talking about you forgive sin? You're not God. Because they, 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 they're teaching and they're reading and they, from the Old Testament and they believe that the only one could forgive sin was God. Okay? So now, not yet finding anything in Jesus' teaching to criticize him, they, 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 they focus their attention on his action and their implied identity. They are not correct in the absolute sense when they say God alone can forgive sin. People are encouraged to forgive sins committed against one another, according to Matthew chapter 6 and 14, Colossians 3, 12 and 13. But the scribes and the Pharisees are not God, and they are not Correct. So what happened here now, they're saying, how can he say he can forgive sin? Only God can do that alone. And they're saying that he's taking up the role and saying that he's God. This is what he's doing. But, but, but for 
a mere human to forgive and commit against, God would indeed be blaspheming, which was punishable by death. So that is according to Leviticus chapter four, uh, 24 and verse 16. So various forms of the word blasphemy occur dozens of times in the New Testament. Jesus eventually would be crucified on the very same charge. So here do you got these, these people out there looking, doing whatever they can to speak and to say whatever they can or they will against Jesus. Rather than accept his teaching, rather than to accept who he really is, it comes with all of these difficult things. Now, 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 with 22, he said, But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your heart? Jesus knows everything. Now here he's God in the flesh. And he knows what they think. And that's why he said he knows the thoughts even before they enter our heart. Jesus knows the stuff. So by doing that, Everyone present could see the evidence of faith of the man and his friend in their action. Jesus, however, was able to see the doubt and the light and the faith of the others that were there. So that's that his divine power. OK, so the ability to know people heart and intermode thought is one of divine characters. That's why y'all often hear me say, people say, well, I know, you, you know, he or she think, you don't know that God has not given any of us that characteristic to think and to see in the one heart and know what he or she is thinking. Only Jesus. And that's why he could say here in verse 22 when he said, when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he knew what they, and he answered, and he said unto them, what reason you in your hearts. Then he turned the table on them. Look what he said. Which is easier to say? Thy sin be forgiven thee? Or to say, rise up and walk? Which is easy? Mm. Now they got a problem. Jesus asked them a question. Rather it's easy? So not waiting for an answer to his question, Jesus immediately opposed another. Which is the greater less, less? So he asked them, if a glass can be eight ounces of water, use hot on it. So what do you see? You see that. And this is what he talk about when he says in 24. But, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick, and Paul said, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. What Jesus did. Jesus know what they're thinking. So now Jesus turned. Now what Jesus did, you know, when he forgave the man, and when he tell him, thy sins are forgiven thee, in verse 20. No one could see that the man's sins were forgiven, okay? We don't have that divine character that we know when one sin is forgiven. Only God does that. So they was arguing this. So now what Jesus did, he turned and said, now y'all are thinking that this man, that only God can forgive sin. And Jesus told him, well, he said, that faith, he saw the faith that the, paraly the, the paralyzed man had, right? So now with his faith, Jesus forgave his sin. So they couldn't see that his sins were forgiven. So what Jesus did now, Jesus said, I do something that you can see me work in your presence. So what he does. But you know, in verse 24, that the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sins, okay? I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, thy couch, and go into thy house. Now, what Jesus did. Jesus did something here that they could see 
what's happening. And that's why it tells us that faith is what? It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. So we see it here that Jesus said, your faith is what made you. Your faith is why your sins are forgiven. So we see what happened here that now, after his sins were forgiven, they said that Jesus, only God has the power to forgive sin. But now Jesus said, I'm going to show you something else. Maybe you don't believe that his sins were forgiven, but I'm going to do something right in the midst of you that you can't help but from recognizing who I am and the power that I have. And Jesus turned to them and he turns on them and this is what he said. The last part of the lesson, excuse me, in verse 25 and 26, what does does it say? It says, Jesus worked is despised and discussed. Now, what are we talking about? When we look at this, he tell them to pick up that couch and go home, right? And, and, and it says what? And immediately, not later, he rose up before them, everybody, and took up that wherein he lay. And departed to his own house, doing what? Glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God. And were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Now, Jesus, you don't believe that I forgive him of his sin. But I'm going to watch something right in the midst of you. And that's why it tells us about faith that the evidence of things unseen. We could not see the man, uh, uh, faith that he was forgiven. But the evidence here is what was not seen. But the evidence here is going to be the faith. And we can see that what he gets up. That is the evidence of his faith. That's why I say faith is the substance. You have to have something. Something is consist of something. So his, his, his faith now, and he hoped for. Now the evidence is now is seen. So they get up and they walk. So earlier Luke established Jesus' authority and power to heal and to drive out demons back in chapter uh, 4. So now he talk about, remember, remember that Jesus had power and authority. Now there were, there, listen now, listen now. The, we remember that Authority is the right to do something. And the power is the ability to do something. Jesus has power. He has the right to do something. And then the power, he has the ability to do something. Luke is only writing to uh, of the folk author who's brought this out and bring this out and share it with us that these are the things that Jesus is able to do. So now after he, he does all of that and, the, and, 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 and to say that, well, immediately, not later, that the healing happened instantly and the mayor and, and the mayor spoken words of Jesus, this particular mean that uh, immediately. And that's why Jesus has the power and that's why once one come and confess this sin, Jesus doesn't say along and along. He said, I take away your sin. Instant. And that's what he does with this man. He allows him what? To get up immediately and walk in the midst of the people. That the people can see what God is doing. That how God works his power and how God uses his authority. And the man and the ability to walk will only have been done by Jesus Christ. And Jesus come, commanded them. And he talked about a true friend. And, he, and, and, and not only was the power and it was not only the faith of the four friends that brought this man, to Je- this man to Jesus, but the man that they brought to Jesus, he had faith as well. And by their faith and, and, and believing that if we get him to Jesus, that he would be healed, then what? All of them. And that's why I say when the people of God, when the people of God come together 
and become on one accord and believe in the mighty works of God, God will do miraculous things. He will, he, will, he, will, he will do things that we had no idea that this power and the power that God can do because but we know that there is nothing, nothing that he can't do. But when we believe together, so we see what? These five men, four who took the time and did all of this for their friend. No doubt their friend heard that Jesus was in Galilee teaching that he's a healer. And they believed as the woman with the issue of blood, she said, I believe that if I get to him. But she had done other things before. But it doesn't say whether this man had tried any other medicine or anything before that. Parallel, we know it's a nervous system, caused the nerve to break down and all of that. But this man had believed. And no, and no doubt he shared with his friends that if I can only get to Jesus, I believe I'll walk again. And no doubt that's what they're talking about, good friends. And no doubt I, I, I started this, I look at what Job friends did. But here these four, they, they're different. They, they believe along with him. And they took the, 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 the time. They took the time. That's why I say a friend in need is a friend indeed. People will stick with you. Oh, yeah, I'm your friend. I'll stick with you through thick and thin. Yes, they say that. And no sooner the thing began to get thick, they thin out. But Jesus and these friends didn't do that. And this, I look at this, I said, this is what he talked about. True friend, Jesus said, if we find one friend on earth, we have done well. Well, here this man, he got, what, four. And they go and they didn't think about it what they were doing, made the way, and no doubt it was difficult getting that man up the stairs. That, like, look at these stairs here. And, and, and I'm quite sure the stairs in Palestine and on that house were not like these stairs. They probably was, 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 was deeper, was steeper. There could have been a way like a ladder, like they just climbed straight up. We don't know. But whatever it was, they took the time. And it was their determination that we're going to get him up there. That we're going to get him down before Jesus. So they did that. And, and up there, and I'm saying, that's why I'm saying earlier. Now they up there, they tear down this roof. And the way those roofs were built, it wasn't shingle up, mellow roof or, that we have modern day time now. They were made out of straw, mud, clay, and all that. So during the, 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 the interruption of that roof, dust or something had to be falling down on the inside. But the people were so focused at listening at Jesus, that the other things that were going on around them, it did not concern them. And if we would take our focus and put our focus on God and what he can do and what he will do for us, all the other foolishness and the thing that is going on in the world that we get so wrapped up in, that we can't even turn our true focus to God just for a little while. We're so concerned and we're so focused on what's happening on Facebook, what's happening on the news and all of that stuff. Yes, it's good to know what's going on in the news, but don't let that be your main focus all the time. We like, we, 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 we like, we like, we like a lot of nonsense, like these Pharisees and these doctors were. They, they wanted to hear all the foolishness, but here are these, these four men. And the, and the fifth man, the one, they came with faith. And with all of that was going on, they, the, the people were not disturbed. You're not getting through here. But we're going to get to Jesus. We're going to get to Jesus. And the old folks said, where there was a will, there was a way. And their will was that we will get you to Jesus. And when they saw that peep through the roof, I imagine. So Debra is over there. So we need to start tearing this way. Now, no doubt all of those people around there, the dust falling down, they probably didn't even realize what was going on. But here Jesus is here, and they let him down right in the front. And Jesus said, your faith. Huh? Don't tell me what God can't do. And what God said, said all things, is there anything too hard for God? No, there is nothing too hard for God. And then it says, close out. When he said, and listen what it said, and they were all amazed, and they glorified God, 
and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Never seen nothing like that. Even, even, even them Pharisees and the doctors, they had to confess. This is something we've never seen before. This is the only verse in the New Testament where amazement, glorifying God, and fear God occurs together in a reaction of a crowd. So all of these things took place. This is the, this is the crowd full reaction as recorded by Luke is spoken aloud. All of these things, strange things, which occur only here in the New Testament, will sound like the English word paradox. There's reaction unlike that which was in Luke 4, 28 and 29. This is one of the confused neutrality. It reaches no conclusion. We've seen strange things. Otherwise, they're saying we have seen some of everything. But what we saw today, we never seen nothing like that before. Him, they go up on the rooftop, tear the roof down. And after they tore the roof down, then they let the man down. Then when the man got down, Jesus began, now everybody is down. The roof is off. The man is down. Now I'm going to do some uplifting. So he lift him up. Tell him, get up. Go home. And they say, what? Not later, but immediately he picked up his bed and went home. Glorifying and praising God. And the people said, this is something new. We have not seen nothing like that before. Father, we are grateful for the friends who have helped us on our faith journey. We pray that you will help us to be friends who cares and who carries the base of another one need. Regardless of the obstacle or the path that might be in our way. We give you thanks for friends and the strength to be friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. That's why we often sing that hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. Huh? All our sins are free to bear. Why? And all we have to do is do what? Take everything to him in prayer. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Deacon Kaiser, so while you're right there at that door, you can let them know it's... Uh, and that's a wrap for our Sunday School lesson. If you have any questions or comments, just drop them in the chat. And who knows, we might even shout you out on our next stream. Don't forget, our morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this stream. Also, we warmly invite you to join us in person and witness the power of faithful connection firsthand. Your presence will greatly enrich us as worship experience for all of us.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Ebenezer. And we are so thankful that God has blessed us and allow us to see another Sabbath, the fourth first Sunday of the year. Oh, how time moves on and wait for no one. We will now have a moment with the Master. May we all stand, please. to worship. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart before the gods. I will sing your praises. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. Amen. Psalms 138 verse 1 and 2. We will now have selection from the choir. Following that, we will have scripture by Reverend Roberts and prayer by Deacon Kaiser.
If the world, if the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along, Omega Bad. Just remember in his words how he feeds the little birds. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, if your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is all sinking in despair. Jesus knows the pain you feel can say then he can heal take your burdens to the lord and leave it there oh leave them there leave them there leave it there take your burdens to the lord and leave it there oh if you trust and never doubt he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the floor. Leave it there. When your youthful, when your youthful days are gone, and old age is stealing on, and your body bends beneath the weight of care. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Yeah! Oh, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Because if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh leave, leave it there. Oh, leave, oh, leave it there. Take your, your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Because if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. You know, sometimes our burdens get too heavy for us to carry ourselves and we have to give them to the Lord. No need to carry them to your buddies or your friends because they're not going to be able to help you. Sometimes only God can lift that weight. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses one through six. The Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 4, I, I, I think I said uh, chapter 5. Yes, it is. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Yeah. Come on, bro. And the word of God reads, uh -huh. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gardenians. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him 
no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Yes. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains mm. and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Yes. But when he saw Jesus afar off, mm -hmm. he ran and worshiped him. Yes. Thus I have read six verses from the Gospel of Mark, chapter five. May God add his blessings to the hearers and the doers of his holy words. Yes. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father, Oh, Father, we come now in the name of your son, Jesus. We come now, Father, thanking you for this day that you have allowed us to come out, praise and worship your holy name. Father, we thank you now for touching us this morning and waking us up, still closing our right mind and our right body. Father, we was able to wake up this morning and see what we can see and reach what we can reach and walk where we can walk. And Father, you have blessed us. And we just thank you and we just praise you. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for your joy and we just thank you for your peace. These are the things only you could have given us. And we just thank you and we just praise you and we magnify your holy name for it. <clears throat> Father, we come now thanking you. Thanking you for just looking upon us, Father. You are better to us than we are to ourselves. We thank you for covering us as we travel up and down these dangerous highways and byways. Oh, Father, you, you kept us, Father. You protected us, Father. Uh, we didn't know we were being protected. But we thank you and we just praise you now. We love you, Father, and we will continue magnifying and glorifying your holy name. Lord, we ask now that you just look over the sea. Thank you, Lord. Once you lie in your bed of affliction this morning, Father, we ask now, Father, that you just touch them, Father. Touch from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. Let them know that you are still in the healing business, Father. Lord, we just thank you now. Look over them, Father. Keep them in a mighty way. The ones in the hospital, one in the nursing home, Father. <clears throat> Father, just watch over them and keep them. And Father, we pray for the ones <clears throat> in prison inmates this morning, Father. The ones that are behind bars, Father. We ask that you be with them, Father. Let them know that they might be behind the bars, Father, but they can be saved if they just call out to your name. Keep them, Father, in them out of the way. We thank you now, and we just praise you now. And Father, at this time, we ask now that you be with all the ministers this morning, Father, in the pulpit, pool pool Father. Watch over them, keep them, Father, as they continue preaching and teaching your word, Father. And we ask now that you just bless Reverend Troy Miller this morning, Father. Touch, Father, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Father. As he bring forth your word, Father, oh, Lord, let us have it put it in our hearts, Father, that when we go out, Father, we will tell people the good news that we have heard. Lord, we just thank you now for Reverend Troy Miller. We thank you for his family this morning, Father, and we just praise you for them. And Father, we want to thank you for our former pastor, our mercy, Pastor Wendler. We thank you for his family this morning, Father. We ask, Father, that you keep them this morning, Father. Father, we know you are, you can heal. We know that you are a healer. And we ask, Father, that you heal that family this morning in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you now, and we just bless you. Now, Father, we ask now that you just hear our prayers this morning, and forgive us, Father, of all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen and amen. Yeah. 
what's his name? Jesus is Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, 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 what's his name? Jesus is Jesus, 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 what's his name? Jesus is his name. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank you, Reverend Roberts, for the scripture, Deacon uh, Kaiser, for the uh, prayer. We now come to our responsive reading, which is our church covenant. We ask that you all stand. They see your bulletin. We are to covenize ourselves. God cut covenant with his people. Amen. And as we prepare now on this first Sunday, the Gospel of Mark, Jesus said when he was with his disciples on that Thursday night, he said, this is my blood which is shed. And he said, this is a new covenant mm -hmm. which is shed for the remission of sin. So let us covenize ourselves with each other. And as we read this covenant and take it home and study, let us live out how we are covenizing ourselves with each other. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. So I will lead you. By what common experience do we enter into spiritual fellowship and covenant relationship with one another? And having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angel in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into the kingdom with one another as one body in Christ. What is the bond of our union with one another? We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. What are our privilege and duties in this church? To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship and ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines. What vows do we gladly make us steward or what God entrusted to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. What gracious tasks do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek our salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. To what manner of life and conversation are we solemnly pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be first in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, avoiding all tattering, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale of and the use of intoxicating drinks as beverages, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, and all we are brethren, by what fraternity ministry are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teaching of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid others in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. What is our agreement when we move from this community? We more engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. What benediction concludes our covenant? Altogether, 
and may the God, God of peace, who brought us again from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the eternal covenant, even our Lord Jesus Christ, makes us perfect in, in every good thing to do his will, working as us, that is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much for reading our church covenant. Amen. Thank you. Now we have our announcements. Due to rising COVID-19 cases, we are asking all churchgoers to follow safety guidelines. Please wear masks and have your temperature checked when entering the church premises. Avoid services if symptomatic. Join us on Facebook and YouTube if unwell. We, the Ebenezer Church family, would like to take a moment to extend a warm welcome to all our visitors, whether you are here in person or watching us online. Follow us on our website at www.embcmanning.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and YouTube at EMBC Manning. If you are new to Ebenezer, please fill out a Connect card online or use the QR code in your program. Here are some more ways you can participate with our Ebenezer Church family and greater faith community. Join us for our virtual Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons when you visit our pages. Visit our website for details and links. Our next church conference will be on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. All members are asked to attend. The South Carolina Baptist Congress of Christian Education will have workshops for the youth and youth workers. The workshop is designed to help youth workers remain innovative in retaining youth in a local church. This will be held on April 13th at 8 a.m. at Morris College. Go to our events page for a list of courses and to register. The CSI Youth Academy, organized by the Law Enforcement Lab at the F.E. DeBose Career Center, currently has openings. This academy is for students in grades 9 through 11 and will take place from April 16th through the 18th from 4 to 6 p.m. To secure a spot or get further information, please reach out to Liddell Grice at liddell.grice at clarendoncsd.org. Trinity Baptist Church and the Kingdom Women of South Carolina cordially invites you to their annual prayer breakfast. It will be held on April 20th at 9 a.m. The guest speaker will be Reverend Tasha Brown, pastor of the St. Matthew's Holiness Church in Lake City. Tickets are $15. Contact First Lady Evangelist Patricia M. Miller at 803-460-9947. Here are some ways you can serve the Ebenezer family. The media ministry is currently in need of at least two volunteers to operate cameras, projection, and sound equipment for our church services and live streams. If you are interested and willing to learn, training will be provided. For more information, please reach out to Victor Wesley. The media ministry is also looking for volunteers to contribute to their Mother's Day and Father's Day tribute videos. We would love for members to share pictures and videos of their moms and dads. We are also looking for individuals who are willing to be filmed expressing how having their parents in their life has impacted them. Reach out to Victor Wesley for more details. Don't forget to contribute to Family and Friends Day and the church anniversary. All members are asked to provide their phone numbers and email addresses to our church secretary Shannon Spann. To view all upcoming events, visit our website at www. Dot embcmanning.org and click on the events link. To have an event featured on our page, contact Victor Wesley at ebenezernbcmedia at gmail.com. Thank you, <clears throat> media minister. Just a traditional announcement. Let us uh, put some emphasis on one of them or so now. Let us not forget that this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. we will have our church conference. And we are asking all members that you please attend. And the purpose of this meeting will be voting for a pastor. We, the search committee, we has been tolling this for March of last year. We put many hours, many thoughts, and most of all, much prayer. And we have come to the conclusion that it's time now for us to bring the church together. 
that we vote for a pastor on this coming Saturday. As I stated before, members come and vote. If you don't vote, you has no right. And if you're not in good standing, we share with you before you come. You, will, you can come to the meeting, but you will not be able to vote. We're not being hard, we're only being fair. We have some that have contributed to this church. I mean, Brother Johnson communicates for years. So I hope that all, if they can come, but I hope they don't come anticipating the vote. And if you haven't, we can have the Constitution. We follow the Constitution. And I hope that you bring your, your covenant that we read today, and we can verify what we're doing through that as well. Amen? Amen. 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 Everyone is not going to be satisfied, but we're doing the work of God. Last, we sadly to announce the passing of Sister Dorothy Zimmerman over in Orangeburg. I spoke with Brother Zimmerman on yesterday. Let us uplift that family in prayer. Not only that family, but for all of those that is on our sick list. If you can't visit them, call them, for kind word will mean so much. It's their time now, but we don't know who is next. I'm a firm believer. The next step that we take could be the step that we stumble and fall. And we will be just like the Sunday school lesson this morning. We will need a friend. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, let us move on in our order of worship as we now prepare our hearts for giving. For giving back to God a portion of that he has, he has so richly blessed us with. Deacons and trustee, will you come please? May we all stand as we prepare for bringing our gifts, tithes, and offerings. brought to you by EMBC Media Ministry. If you feel led to contribute, please consider donating by clicking on Giveify and selecting the media envelope. It's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the test. He's gonna open up a window. Yeah. Pour you out a blessing. Yeah. It's your season to be blessed. Oh, it's, it's your season yeah. to be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the day. He's gonna open, open up, up a window. window. Yes, he will. Pour you out a blessing. It's your season.
thank you for your giving. Before the choir come, Brother Johnson has one uh, quick announcement. And following his announcement, we will hear our preacher for the day, Reverend Troy Miller, who is no stranger to us by now. And after uh, that, we will follow through. Amen. Brother Troy Mo. I'm sorry, Brother Troy Mo. I got that from Deacon Carter when he was praying, Deacon Miller. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, Deacon Gamble. I just wanted to rise as the chairperson of the uh, trustee board and to thank all of our members uh, for your support uh, here at Ebenezer. And as I said one time before, sometimes um, when, I, when I sit down uh, in my normal seat, uh, I'll get like several uh, notifications that folks have also donated online. Amen. So it's just it's good from time to time to thank because we do have to support our church. But what I wanted to say is that on our envelopes, we have member numbers, and we were asking members to put their member number on the envelope. Uh, some do, and some don't, and that's fine, but what was really um, kind of confusing to me is that uh, some people would put what they thought was their member number, and so I still had to take time and go and make sure that, uh, that you had to, so we could make sure we have good record keeping. So what uh, we have asked our, our trustee Grice to do, when we get the new order of envelopes, it's not going to say um, member number, it's going to say ward number. And we have four deacons, and so all you got to do is put either that deacon's name or the number. Uh, deacon Gamble is ward one, Deacon James is ward two, uh, Deacon uh, uh, Walker is ward three, and Deacon Kyle's is ward four. We just want to make sure we have proper record keeping. And the last thing I want to say, uh, it was mentioned that we're going to meet on Saturday and we're going to vote. And the only thing I want to do is assure all of our members, I'm not on the committee, but I've worked very closely with them. And I, I'm, I'm, I want to thank the committee, first of all, but I want to say that everything that the committee has done from day one up until now has been done by our church constitution and our bylaws. Amen. And I'm so glad we have church constitution and bylaws because we have something we can abide by. And so I hope everybody respect the fact that, um, that we're going by what we voted on as how we ought to be governed. Thank you very much.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him use you, Deacon. Let him use you. His spirit is falling fresh in this house. Somebody salute the spirit of God in here today. My, my, my. Ain't God good, church? This quickening that we just felt and we're feeling currently, it's a high that drugs cannot match. This quickening that we feel, it's a mellowness that alcohol cannot induce. But this feeling that we're feeling right now, this quickening, can only be given by the Holy Spirit. And it comes when the church is on one accord. Ebenezer always stay on one accord. Because when we're on one accord, the Lord will show up and miracles will follow. Amen, church? Amen, Amen church. Amen. Amen. God is so good, church. We thank God for another opportunity at health, life, and strength. We thank God that the blood is yet running warm in our veins. And we thank God that we're yet in the land of the living. Amen? God is so good, church. I come to you today greeting you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died for each and every one of us. Giving honor to the great pastor, emeritus of this church, Pastor Winley and his family. Praying for him diligently, amen, that God sees him through this time. We give honor to these great deacons of this house, amen, to the officers and trustees of this house, to these great preachers that grace the rostrum with me, to the multimedia staff, to the musicianship of this church, to the choir of this church, and to the ushers that bravely mount the door. God bless you. We pray that God be with us all in this time. Amen. Amen. I thank God for having this opportunity to be with you again. God has truly blessed me to meet the Ebenezer Church family. And I want you to know that I will always hold you in my heart. Amen. Man, God is truly good. I love it when they sing that he's an on-time God. And as I was coming down today from Columbia, it seemed like everybody wanted to drive three miles an hour. Amen. And I said, it seems like no matter how early I leave the house, is a truck full of hay or something trying to slow me down. Yeah. Amen. But I thank God that there was no state troopers and county mounties on the road. Amen. That I was able to press the metal and keep on in. Amen. I know my wife was shocked because she tells me I drive Miss Daisy. Amen. I drive slow. But when I got to get where I got to go, church. Amen. 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 You got to press that metal. Amen. Speaking of my family and my wife, I thank God for my son being here with me today. Amen. 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 I thank God for my beautiful wife being here with me. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah, I just thank God for just being here in the fellowship again. We should never take lightly being in the fellowship. Amen. Amen. It's something about when we come together to praise God. Not only will miracles happen, but we should expect miracles to happen. As Deacon Gamble was giving God praise and utterance of the Spirit, I just, I felt in my soul that if anybody in here was doubting that God was going to show up, if anybody in here had doubt that God was going to make a way, the deacon praising God at the front of the church should have showed you right now that God is in the building. I want you to take the opportunity for whatever thing that you thought the enemy was holding from you to tell God right now that you receive it. That you believe that he's going to do just what he said. And Ebenezer, I want to tell you something even before I take my text. That God is so good that the thing that you thought you were too scared to ask for, the thing that you thought was outlandish and crazy, the thing that you thought that you would be a fool to even speak it into existence, that's the thing he desires to do for you today. Amen? God wants to shock you with his blessings, and he wants to overtake us with his goodness. Can somebody believe on that with me today? Can somebody believe on that with me today? If aspirin can take a headache away, what can the blood of Jesus remove? My God, my God. But I don't want to be before you long. Uh, I was talking to Brother Johnson. There's some type of game happening today. I don't know what's happening. Uh, some, must be a cricket or, or a chess match or something. I don't know. But I heard that people's very interested in this match that's going to happen. So not to... Not to you know, push through the time, but we want to be mindful of y'all time and the blessings. Amen. Amen. Choir, thank you for blessing us with that song. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I want to ask my wife in advance before I close this sermon, either after or before communion, whatever is appropriate, if the deacons will allow it. I know her gift is singing and she is yet to sing. And I know at our home church, we don't have any musicians. So I want, I want my wife to get an opportunity to use her gift. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. Amen. Amen. So, baby, I don't care what the Lord placed on your heart. It can be hot cross buns. It can be, I don't know, whatever it is. As long as you put Jesus in it, we're going to jam to it. Amen. 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 I've been playing with that woman since we've been 14. Can you believe it? Amen. Since we've been 14. Digging James, she ignored me for so long, but I put the Steve Urkel on. <laughs> I remember how Urkel did Laura, amen? Amen. And by the end of season six, Laura was Urkel's, amen? Amen. Amen. Go with me to the book of Mark, amen? Book of Mark. I pray y'all like to laugh, amen, because we only have one life to live, and I'm going to enjoy every moment of mine, amen? Amen. He came that we might have life and life more abundantly, which means he came to give us even greater joy than we could ever imagine. And I'm going to enjoy every moment that the Lord gives me, church. How about you? Amen. Book of Mark, chapter 5. And I just want you to focus. We're back in our sermon series, A Year of Choices. Remember when I first came to you, I said that 2024 is a year of choices. And we're back in our sermon series on that. And I want you to go with me to Mark 5. We just want to grab that sixth verse where it says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. And i like to speak to you just from the title, A Glimpse of Jesus Changed My Life. A Glimpse of Jesus Changed My Life. And if I had a subtext to apply, it would be, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to worship him. If you don't mind, bow with me in the spirit of prayer. Dear eternal, everlasting God, our Father, we come to you now, God, as humble as we know how. First of all, God, thanking you for being God and God all by yourself. Secondly, God, thank you for choosing us such a needy nation. To not only be our God, but you said you are our Father. Yeah. 
Father, we need you right now. Father, we call upon your holy name. Father, we need you right now to wipe away the tears that we cried last night and reveal to us that your joy has come this morning. God, we need you right now to push away the pain that's trying to hinder us and let us know that healing is already met its mark. God, we need you right now to speak to our hearts and our hard situations. And let us know right now, God, that you are an encourager of those that diligently seek you. God, thank you right now. Be with us right now, God. Bless this waiting congregation with a word that will tell them right now that peace has come. Bless us right now, God, with a word that will let us know right now that no trouble or heartache can endure when your presence is near. God, we thank you right now. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over every moment we stand with you. And we thank you right now, God, that you're blessing those that we're duty bound to pray for, God. We thank you that you're blessing those even watching over the internet. God, let them know that you are a God that's here, there, and everywhere, all at the same time. Thank you, God, for blessing us. We welcome your Holy Spirit in this house, but more importantly, in our hearts. Speak now, Almighty King, for thy servants hear of thee. For it's in the name of Jesus we do pray and welcome this Holy Spirit. May the church say amen. 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 Our text brings us to the seacoast where our Lord and Savior couldn't even take a nap. Church, have you ever found out that when you're the most tired, that's when your kids get the most busy? Have you ever noticed that when you had a young baby, if you ever were sleepy, that's when the baby wanted to cry the most? Have you ever noticed that when you've been driving home saying, I can't wait to get home because I'm going to take off these clothes, kick off these shoes. I'm going to sit on the couch and let TV watch me. Have you ever noticed that even before you get home, your phone will ring and now you've got to detour or go somewhere else or as soon as you put your key in the door, there's somebody on the other side with their clothes on already saying, Mama, I need a ride too. Seems like whenever your flesh gets its most tired is when you often get the most challenged. Have you ever noticed that when you get tired of something or a situation, a challenge is not far off? But church, I want you to know right now that even Jesus Christ, who could not even get a nap on the ship as they were crossing over to the other side, had to face this challenge. His disciples on the ship were scared because a storm arose. Church, I want you to know right now, even with your walk in Jesus, you can expect some storms to come up every now and then. You can expect some storms to blow. You can expect some rain to fall. The Bible even says that the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. Amen. But let me tell you something. I thank God that even Dollar Tree sells umbrellas because even though it's raining, don't mean I got to get wet. Amen. Because something about having a covering. Can somebody praise God with me and say, thank God I have a covering over me that when the storm comes and when the winds blow, I have a covering that will keep me safe and sound in a time of a storm. See, the disciples found out that Jesus was a covering while they were on the boat because while they were scared and came to Jesus with a silly question, I found this out, Ebenezer, that when a storm comes, we can show our level of spiritual maturity by how we react to the storm. All right. When trouble is in our life, we can show how much we truly trust God by the way we react to what's going on around us. Yeah. The Bible says that when the storm got real bad, the disciples sent Peter. Ain't that something how they always pick one man to go speak for them? Right. Deacons, I want you to know right now, that's why you over wards. They're going to pick one man to speak for them. Amen. Right. And I want you to know that they sent Peter every time it was some foolishness going down. It's always came through the voice of Peter. Yeah. They sent Peter down to the bottom of the ship to ask Jesus. And Peter came out his mouth, as the kids would say, saying, Master, care if thou not that we perish. I have to picture that in my head, church. They up there going crazy because the ship blowing and the wind's coming. And Jesus, the Bible tells us, is downstairs asleep with his head on a pillow. Don't that make you mad, church? Have you ever been going through something and somebody around you act like it ain't nothing going on? 
Have you, man, let me ask you a question. Have you ever worried how you was going to get these bills paid, how everything was going to come together, how you are going to make things work, and you look over and your wife over there just busting a good sleep? Women, have you ever been concerned how you was going to get these things done? How you going to get new school clothes for the babies, put shoes on their feet? How you going to keep the roof over and the water on and your kids come home? La, 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 la. You say, how can you have peace when the whole world is coming down? Do you not care what I'm going through? But Ebenezer, I came to tell you right now, God not only knows your storm, but God can speak to your storm. Oh my, God can break the components down because to us it's a storm, but God knows what causes the storm. He knows where it came from. He knows the bariatric pressure. He knows if it's a northeast gale wind. He knows if the humidity is deeper. God can come out and he can speak it with one word. He controlled the whole storm when he said, peace, yes. be still. Yes. Yes. Church, I want to tell you right now, God sent me to give you a message today. You got to be willing to tell your storm, peace, be still. But I found out, Deacon James, when I scream in a storm, let me tell you how good God is. Only his voice can pierce the storm. But if you and I walk out in a storm and we get to scream in Deacon Gamble, our voice don't carry very far. It reverberates back at us. And I believe that that's what God wanted me to tell you today, that when you step out and speak to your storm, know that God wants the echo to go in your head and in your heart, that the peace you need to find is already inside of you. And the stillness you need, you need to know that when you stand still, you can know that he is God. Church, Jesus was tired, but he calmed the storm down and he made it to the other side with his disciples. But the Bible tells us immediately when he made it to the shore, there came out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. They said, the Bible tells us that he dwelled in the tombs and no man could bind him, not even with chains. Church, I don't know if you know this right now, but trouble will always be in our lives. Trouble will always come, but I need you to know that your trouble is not a man or a woman. But your trouble, just like the storm, has an origin point. And our trouble comes from the enemy. We only really have one enemy. The enemy of God wants to make us think that the storms in our life are stronger than what they are. But glory be to God, there's no name stronger than the name of Jesus. See, men, let me tell you something. I teach the Purpose Church this all the time. That the difference you can tell between an enemy and a, a, a foe, a, we, the way you can tell between an enemy and a hater, we should say in these days, is that because no matter what you do, you can give a hater some money and a hater will leave you alone. You can give a hater some food and they'll burp and walk out your kitchen. You can do something to make a hater leave. But your enemy, no matter what you do, your enemy is not satisfied till they can just tear you down to your lowest level. You can't be nice to your enemy. If you try to hand your enemy some bread, they'll slap it out your hand so neither one of you can have it. Your enemy is the type that if your lights is off, they'll be the one to walk by and laugh, ha ha, no matter what's going on, even though their lights is out. Church, we have an enemy that no matter what's going on in our lives, he's trying to tear us down and keep us down. down. Yes. See, you think your trouble finds you, but look how quickly this man's troubles finds Jesus. Jesus was physically tired and the enemy knew it, so he thought this would be the perfect time to attack Jesus and his ministry. Ebenezer, do you know that there's a tug of war going on? And the enemy's pulling with both hands while leaning, trying to pull us over to his side? Yes. But Jesus is sitting there with the rope around his pinky finger just playing with him. The enemy's pulling hard, but Jesus is doing like this. And winning every time, just toying with the devil. And I want you to know this right now, that no matter what's going on in our lives, we have to be careful that we don't let the storms and troubles in our lives tempt us to live in dead places. 
This enemy, this, this man that came to meet Jesus, the Bible says that immediately they met him, a man, that he knew Jesus was coming in before the boat even arrived. Because if you read the text, Kevin, it said he met Jesus at the shore. Yes. That means he had to leave from where he was in time to meet Jesus. Jesus had the one foot doctrine going on. Do anybody know what the fun one foot doctrine is? Is that if you come to America and you step one foot on land, you can stay. But as long as they catch you before you get off the boat, you got to stay and go back to where you're from. But Jesus only got his feet on the shore when the enemy met him through this man. Church, this man, my God. The Bible says that this man lived in a dead place. Church, I need you to know that dead situations will cause you to sometimes live with dead people. See, I'm telling you right now, we have to be careful who we let minister and live around us. Because let me tell you something. I don't need people around me that when I'm going through trouble to tell me how bad it is. I don't need people around me that when I'm feeling at my lowest, I don't need them pouring water on this drowning man. I don't need nobody telling me, yeah, it's really bad. But can I ask you to do something? That when I'm in a low place, when I'm feeling beat down, can you point me to Jesus? Can you tell me that you know a man that can make everything all right? Can you tell me that you know a man that can heal blinded eyes? Can you tell me you know a man that can raise the dead? Can you tell me you know a man that is able to do all things but fail? See, I found this out that when we're in dead situations and we're dealing with dead people, we're having attention to go to a pity party. Church, I want you to know that be careful not to attend your own pity party. All right. Because when we attend our own pity party, we'll find ourselves burdened down and depressed. Yeah. Something about when we attend our own pity party, the refreshments taste like vinegar. It's something about when we attend our own pity party, the biscuits feel like stones. It's something about when we attend our own pity party, there ain't no real music. It's just that old accordion playing that wah, wah, wah. But let me tell you something. You have to trust that God will never invite you to a pity party. God only has victory celebrations. Let me say that again to the deacons. God will never invite you to a pity party. Because God only has victory celebrations. All you have to do is know that God will give us the victory. See, Lord, help me because I I need to tell you right now that the Bible says that this man had an unclean spirit, which means that the spirit was doing everything to fight him on the inside. Church, have you ever felt like no matter how you try to cheer yourself up, you're still sad? Have you ever... Maybe I'm the only one that when the alarm clock go off, I hit snooze 10 times. <laughs> because you know the day is waiting on you. Yeah. Have you ever got to work and didn't even want to go in? Mm-hmm. Sat in the parking lot and decided how you could call in sick? <laughs> Have you ever worked all day? Drove home, get in your own driveway. And got to encourage yourself to push the garage door so you can go inside. Just sat in. How many of y'all sat in your car for an hour before you went in your own house? My, my. My God. I'm not the only one. See, but I want you to know right now. This Bible tells us that this man had an unclean spirit. And no matter what he did, he couldn't find joy. He made sure he was in places that were sorrowful. He made sure he did things that would cause himself pain. The Bible tells us that he dwelled amongst the tombs and that no man could bind him, not even with chains. Have you ever had somebody try to tell you, cheer up, stop doing this thing to yourself. You can do better, but for some reason, you can't break the chain. Some of us need to realize we're tied to stuff that we never asked to be tied to. I heard a young friend of mine tell me, that adulthood is the worst hood he ever lived in. Because when he was a child, things was easy. Mom and daddy had to handle the bills. When we were a child, things were easy. Mom and daddy made sure the rent was paid. 
when we were a child, mom and daddy made sure we had clothes on our back. But something happened after we turned 18. I want to tell the youth of Ebenezer, be careful, quit saying, I can't wait till I grow up because SCNG is waiting on you, baby. I need you to know right now, be careful about saying I can't wait to grow up. The grocery store is waiting on you. And they don't give you Doritos like grandmama do. Church, this man lived in a place and he was tied to dead things. And church, I told you last week, the Bible says that what we loose on earth, he'll loose in heaven. And what we bind on earth, he'll bind in heaven. But what happens when we bind ourselves to dead things? When we attach our stuff to ourselves to things that will never give us peace? What happens when we keep staying in the same relationship, knowing that it ain't going nowhere? What happens when we keep clocking in on the same job that lays us off every year right before Christmas and then brings us back right after the new year? What happens when we keep on doing the same thing over and over again and get tied to dead things? Something inside of us starts slowly dying. Something inside of us makes us think that being sad and beat down is the norm. But child of God, I came to tell you today that God don't want you living in a dead place. God don't want you tied to dead things. See, the Bible says that when this man got so used to being in a dead place, the Bible says that he started doing things to hurt himself. The Bible says that he began to cut himself. And he was in the mountains howling so everybody could hear him cutting himself. He would come down to the tombs and cut himself. And everybody could hear the man howling. And the Bible says that they tried to stop the man from hurting himself. But the man was strong. Have you ever heard that crazy people have strength? Have you ever heard that people that are out their minds have crazy strength? But the craziest thing I've ever seen a person do was hurt themselves and then walk around and show us the wounds. Do you know anybody like that? Sure you do. Your drunk uncle that's always drunk and you, you see him with a liquor bottle. He's cutting himself. Your cousin is still on drugs and they're walking around with red eyes and asking you for $5. They're cutting themselves. You see this? Your girlfriend that they had 10 boyfriends and not one husband and they never been treated right. She's cutting herself. You heard her cry. She's cried in your living room. And you tried to bind her down. You tried to tell a girl, come to church with me. But she runs right back to the mountains. You tried to tell your uncle, stop doing them drugs. Uh, come down to Ebenezer with me. But he runs right back to the drug tombs. Uh, you've seen it. We're cutting ourselves and showing the world our wounds. But the Bible says, when he tried to chain the man, he could thump handcuffs and they'd break. Says he was so strong that he could just explode ankle chains. He was so strong, but he was weak in the right place. See, my Bible tells me that when I am weak, he is mighty. Yes. So the converse of that text means that huh, when I'm strong, he makes me weak enough to need him. Yes. Church, the most dangerous person in the world is somebody that thinks that they got it all together. All right. yeah. That thinks that ain't nothing going wrong in their life. Yes. You know somebody like that. They think they got more money than Oprah. You know somebody like that. Every other year they're getting a brand new car, but they ain't telling you because the last one got repossessed. You know somebody like that. They got brand new clothes, but they you walk by, you stay around too long, they stomach car growling because they look good, but they're hungry. Doing crazy stuff to hurt ourselves while acting like everything is all right. The man was weak in one area. He could do anything he wanted to do and could nobody stop him. Yeah. You know, I found this out, Ebenezer. Then it comes a point in my life where I got to realize I got to turn some people over to Jesus. I've been debating with them too long. And they keep running back to the tombs. Yeah. 
I got to turn some people over to Jesus. I've been preaching to them too long. Yet every time I look for them, they're back in the tombs. And I'm telling you right now, it comes a time where I realize that if I visit the tombs one time too many, I might stay there. I need somebody to realize that sometimes crazy is contagious. That if you stay around the right crazy people too long, pretty soon you find yourself twitching. If you stay around people that smoke too long, pretty soon you find yourself reaching for a cigarette. You hang around people that drink too much, pretty soon you find yourself, well, I'll just take a sip of yours. Crazy can become contagious. But the Bible says that this man could pluck handcuffs and they'll break. They said that this man could explode his ankle chains. And the Bible says that all day and all night, if he wasn't in the high place, he was in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Church, I want to tell you right now that my Lord and Savior found me in a mountain full of excuses. I was sitting high thinking that I had it all together. I was sitting high telling the world that these college degrees would make a way for me. I was sitting high telling people that my last name will get me where I need to go. I was sitting high with excuses telling everybody that no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to be all right. But can I tell you right now that the world has a way of breaking you down. That when you're sitting high sometimes, the next moment you'll find yourself all alone in a graveyard, in a tomb, and realize that all you've been doing is hurting yourself. That all you've been doing is lying to yourself. The worst lie we can tell is the lies we tell ourselves. The Bible says that all day and all night, this man was in the mountains. He was in the mountains or either in the tombs. You got to be careful of people that don't have no mid-range. People that's either very happy or very sad, nowhere in between. This man was dealing with mental illness. He could either be happy or he could be sad. He had no in-between. And church, we see people like that every day in our lives. You can tell by the way they walk up. You can tell by their face. Here she come with that jazz. You know people like that. They on your job. They walk toward the water cooler. You automatically go back to your, chair, your desk. You got a supervisor. You can tell by the way you walk in if she going to be on that thing today. She ain't got no in between. She's either 100 or she's zero. And you pray that today is a 100 day. Because have you ever found out that people that got zero days make your day zero too? It's true, church. Misery loves company. But when you have the joy of God, you don't care if don't nobody want to praise God with you. But as I ask you right now, I need you to put on your sanctified goggles. I need you to look toward heaven's way and imagine that you see this man since they were in a land near Israel. I can imagine that he was a good looking brother. I can imagine that he was a man that if you washed him up and cut his hair, he looked worth something. If you put some better clothes that weren't stained in blood on him, that he could probably get a job interview. But the Bible tells us that this man was howling mad crazy. He was in the high place, cutting himself and howling for help. But I want you to know right now that when he saw Jesus, can somebody testify with me that when he saw Jesus, he saw Jesus from afar off. And that's why the Bible says that right when Jesus Jesus stepped on land. This man met Jesus. Church, he saw Jesus when Jesus was a far way off. And I got to testify to you right now that I found Jesus when I was a far way off. I found Jesus when I was still drinking that stuff. I found Jesus when I was still doing everything like my grandmama said that my britches was big enough to do. 
When I found Jesus, he was a far way off. But I found out what Lily Bell told me was real. She said, baby, if you make one step towards God, he'll make two towards you. And I looked at the text and I examined our text. Then when Jesus made it to shore, it wasn't that it was by coincidence or accident. But we just sang the song that he's an on time God. Yes, he is. God knew that this man had had enough. He had been in the mountains way too long. He had been in a dead place for too long. So Jesus made his way through a bad storm. Can I tell somebody, even if you have to come through a hurricane, he'll find me. Even if you have to bust through a tsunami, he'll get to me. No matter what it takes, my God will be there for me. It says, it says that this man saw Jesus from a far way off. Church, we're talking about a year of choices. We got to choose what we're looking for. Are we looking for the same old thing? that's been keeping us down? Or are we looking for some help, real help in our life? Are we looking for the thing that's keeping us in poverty? Or are we looking toward that thing that can really bless our souls? This man saw Jesus when he was yet a far way off. And the Bible says that he ran. Church, when you see Jesus coming in your life, I need you to run and meet Jesus. Because just like this man, I was in pain for a long time. But one day my pain was at its highest. But I saw Jesus a far way off. One day I was sitting in a crazy place. But one day I saw Jesus a far way off. One day I was dying from the wounds of my own hand. But I saw Jesus a long way off. One day I looked down and I saw my blood. And I realized that the blood of Jesus was a far way off. There's something about when I saw Jesus. It was just a glimpse of Jesus. And it led me to know that everything's going to be all right. There's something about when my eyes laid on Jesus. I realized that he wasn't a liar. Like I was lying to myself. There's something about when I laid eyes on Jesus. Fear tried to paralyze me. But my soul was set free. There's something about when I saw Jesus, I realized that Jesus was all I need. There's something about when I saw Jesus, the mountains weren't high enough. I wanted to live in heaven. There's something about when I saw Jesus, I realized I didn't want to be dead. I wanted to be resurrected. There's something about when I saw Jesus. There's something about the glimpse of Jesus. It don't take but one sight, and the devil got to let me free. There's something about when I look at Jesus, I know everything's going to be all right. I need somebody to say I'm on my way Jesus see because I'm on a mountain of excuses but Jesus is on sea level but I'm on my way I want you to know right now that he'll make every moment count and so I can count every moment with him this man ran to Jesus and when he got to Jesus, we found out that this crazy man, church, follow this with me in the text, and I'm going to let you go. We found out that this crazy man was really a church boy. How can I say this and be in order? Deacon Campbell, does your Bible says that when he got to Jesus, he worshiped him? Who knows how to worship Jesus? Worship God unless somebody be in the church. We learn to worship by watching others worship. So something tells me that when we get in the presence of God, our true essence comes out of us. The Bible says even though he was cut bloody and dirty, when he got to Jesus, the real him showed up. And he began to worship Jesus. Ebenezer, I came to tell somebody today, that if you see Jesus and you worship Jesus, everything's going to turn around in your life. The real you will come out. At the feet of Jesus, the real you will show up. And God will let you know 
That even though you're hurting, he can heal you. Even though you're sad, he can make you glad. And there's something about it. I found this out, Deacon. That everything I've been through, when I finally got to Jesus, and I look back over my life, I had to thank God for my mountaintop experiences. I had to thank him for my tomb days. Because when I met Jesus, he showed me that I went through those things to make me stronger. See, nowadays, it don't make me, some things that used to make me so upset, sister, I don't even think twice about them. I let it roll off my back like a duck lets water. It's something about when you done been through the highs and the lows. When Jesus picks you up, you teach yourself like Paul said. He said, I've learned how to learn worship God when I'm at my highest and when I'm at my lowest. I've got to praise God whether I'm high or low. I got to praise God no matter whether I got $5 or $50. I've got to praise God whether it's me or everybody. But I'm not going to praise God and not get something out of it. Because my Bible tells me that soon after he worshiped Jesus, God turned it around. Yeah. Ebenezer, anybody want God to turn it around today? Well, I think somebody might need to stand to their feet and worship God. If you want God to turn it around, somebody need to stand up and say, thank you, God. Somebody need to stand up and say, thank you, God, that you heard me crying in a high place. You heard me screaming in a low place. Church, I'm going to close with this. That worship is how your soul communicates with God. Worship is a breakthrough moment. See, praise is when you're thanking God for what he's done. But worship is when you're just thanking God for being God. The Bible said the man hadn't even got what he needed yet. But he he skipped over praise and went straight to worship. All right. Because he realized just of being allowed to stand in the presence of Jesus, that everything he needed was already right on hand. Church, I want to tell you this as I close this message, that God has already put everything in you that you need to get your breakthrough. You just need to bring it to Jesus and watch God break down every barrier in your life. And the first barrier he's going to break down is the barrier between our two ears. He's going to teach us to think right. Next thing you know, we'll be speaking right. And if we ever get to speaking right and thinking right, we'll live right. And one day we'll be with him in heaven where every day will be right. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, church. Somebody tell God you love him. Somebody tell God he's worthy. Somebody tell God thank you. The doors of the church are now open. Am I in order? The doors of the church are now open. For that one that wants to come on their Christian experience, for that one that wants to come through letter, for that one that wants to come for restoration, for that one that wants to come through the pool of baptism, won't you come right now? But know here at Ebenezer Baptist Church, they will accept you. First, in the household of faith, which is Christ Jesus. And secondly, if you want to make Ebenezer your church family, these deacons will welcome you in. They will pray for you. These associate ministers will guide you into the Lord's sin as a pastor. Know that this church right here will welcome you first in the household of faith. And secondly, make your membership at Ebenezer solid. Amen. But won't you give God some praise? Won't you come right now for that one that wants to be saved? And I'll be obedient as pastor has requested. But it's so true. We must give God our true worship. And the song just simply says, because of who he is, we worship him. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise.
Praise God, church. Maybe someone wants to gather around the altar for prayer because of who he is. So we can pray and thank God for what he's done before we go into our communing moment. Maybe someone wants to come around this altar and say, God, I thank you. Because of who you are, I saw another day. Because of who you are, I breathe the next breath. Church, around the altar is a powerful place. You know, the enemy can't stand when you get around God's altar. Because he'll never be welcome in the presence of the holies again. And we're able to come into his presence. If you want to make the enemy mad in your life right now and get him at his place, come around this altar. Because I guarantee you at that moment you'll experience some freedom because he can't follow you down here. Come into the presence of God. Receive your freedom for just this moment. And watch God speak into your hearts and into your situations. We're going to go into prayer. And when we pray, we're going to pray for those that we duty bound to pray for. Those in hospitals and care homes. Those in war-torn lands. Those in prison institutions. Those that despitefully use us. Those in bereavement. And we're going to pray for our enemy. But God, we start this prayer right now. Once again, lifting up Pastor Wendley's name to you, God. And the whole Wendley and Galloway family. God, let them know right now that you are still a God that's able to perform miracles. Let them know, God, that all it takes is a word from you. And everything can turn around. God, we pray for the leadership of this church. We pray for the membership of this church. As they make a choice this week coming, God. Let them know that, God, you're bigger than any argument. Let them know right now, God, that your lovely succeeds any vote count. Let them know right now, God, that all that matters is that they gather to do your will and in your way. Speak to them now, right now, God, and let them know that even if they don't have their way, remind them that your will will be done, God. Speak now, Master, and give this church peace. God, we thank you. For what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen, and our souls have received. God, we thank you right now that all it took was one look at you, and we knew that everything was going to work out for our good. God, we thank you right now that you brought us across the sea and delivered us into peace. God, we thank you right now that you're blessing each and every one of us, that you're giving us what we stand in need of, God. We thank you right now that someone may need a financial blessing, and you're sending it right now. We thank you that somebody may need a healing in their body. You're sending it right now, God. We're thanking you right now that you might need a child delivered, God. You're delivering a child right now. Thank you, God, that you're bringing somebody home from prison doors. Thank you in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you in advance for all that you've done and all that you've yet to do. God, we claim in Jesus' name that everything is going to be good. For all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. We thank you, God. And God, we right now, we count it all done. We seal this prayer with a blessing in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now, God, for setting it all in order. For in Jesus' name we pray. May the church say amen. 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 Going back to your seat, praising God. Praise God. We pray, God, that you know 
no matter what your denominational persuasion is or your church affiliation, you're welcome to commune with us today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend McElveen to bless the communion for us. Amen. If you don't mind preaching. Father, in the name of the Lord, we come at this hour, Father, with the honor of the Lord that you told us to, as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to remind Thank everybody you. that we want to remember that your blood is shared for us, Lord, and that your death there, and then on the resurrection day, Father, we say thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just want to just tell you, Father, that we honor you and we give you all the glory. But Father, we come being in obedience with you by taking this communion at this particular time so that we can remind others, others. that they must first, if they have anything ought against their neighbors, to take it to them and then come back and take our communion. But Father, we just want to point the way to you, to others as they come to this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. to be served. We're going to ask all that are eligible to stand at this moment, stand for this. Amen.
Donna, y'all can't bite it with your teeth. Amen. 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 I'll rip that rascal open right in a minute. Amen. 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 Come on, church. How many of you know God did it all? Very night out when David Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took his rightful place at the head of the table. And first he took forth the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Unto God, eat all of it. Amen. And in the same like and manner, he took forth the cup. Hold it up high, Ebenezer. One third of the year has passed. This is the fourth communion of 2024. And God has not failed us yet. He said, this is the blood, the blood of the new covenant. Unto God, drink all of it. And in a like manner, they departed from the Mount of Olives, singing a like in him. My Lord. This is divine. Church, I know I'm not the pastor of this church and I'm not taking an undue liberty, I pray. But I believe something as serious as voting for your pastor requires a fast. Amen. So I'm asking you, not as a candidate, but as an agent of Christ, your last meal on Friday, fast until you, after your vote on Saturday, that God will diminish us that he may rise up. Amen. And break your fast after your vote with your brothers and sisters on one accord. Amen. Amen. So, and I'm not saying that because I'm not trying to carry your vote. Church, let me tell you something. I don't want to be nowhere God don't want me to be. Amen. Because I realized something. 
we're all closer and closer to judgment. And I don't want to do anything that will keep me out of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So please, please, if God lays it on your heart to receive my words, make your last meal on Friday, Saturday, forgive me, your last meal, and pray that God shows up and that our votes be based in God's word and will. And then after your vote, hug your brothers and sisters. Love on them and go get something to eat. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Come on, we're going to close from right here. Amen? Amen. Would it be a song, brother minister, music minister? Amen. Closing song, brother. Above all that we may ask or even think, according to the power that worketh on the inside of us, unto him be glory in the church through all ages and world without end. And all of them that do believe that we're making choices every day will signify by saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 We love you, Ebenezer. Go in peace. For joining us today on our live stream, we hope that you've been blessed by the service. We would love for you to join us in person and experience the incredible power of Facebook connections firsthand. God bless all of you.